All right, hey guys, welcome back to the channel. It's your boy, Jerome. I haven't figured out a channel name except Jerome D. I haven't really figured out how to have a proper intro. Wow, look. Oh, you guys can't see it. That is nice. A Fort Taurus Limited. Nice. <laughs> There's no more growling. It's quiet because I have the cone inside the car. I wanna see how long my engine lasts without a filter. No, it's not true. So very briefly, I removed the coal air intake so I could clean it because it's been, I don't know, uh, over 20. Yeah, close, maybe close to 30,000 miles since I cleaned it so it was pretty dirty pretty dirty um <clears throat> so uh very briefly i just want to share the, the the fact also that i never had the coal air intake tuned to the like because the engine is now able to suck in more air so the computer i'm assuming is smart enough to know that <laughs> there's more air coming in so I could put more fuel or more of this into the engine. I'm assuming that's what the car knows. And so I, sh I assumed that I shouldn't have to go get a tune, even though I've seen people do a uh, coal air intake and they do the full exhaust system and then they do a, a tune on the car and it actually produces a lot more power. Um, however, that's not the case for me. So, I think I've shared this with you guys before with the coal air intake system. On lower RPMs or lower speeds, it's kind of like you can hear the air sucking in. You can hear the, you know, it's like, sounds like a turbocharger whine. Turbocharger. Yeah, it's not like a supercharger, but you can hear the, the hissing. You can hear the air going in, but you're like, okay, am I going to go anywhere? But you know you're moving, but just not as fast as you used to when it was not in. And so with the coal air intake, lower speeds, it's kind of like a drive. I noticed my zero to 60 times were dropped by like one second. Um, if you don't know what one second looks like, that's a lot. Um, given it's a big, heavy car, I mean, 4,000 pounds and, and you're trying to do a zero to 60, that's rough. So, uh, at higher speeds in RPM, this this thing, I took out a, a Charger RT and the dude at the, you know, was like, on the track was like, whoa, what's going on? Like, what you got? And I'm like, just an upgrade in the exhaust and the, and the coal air intake. Um, but of course, at a higher speed, he toasts me because I'm limited to about 112, 113 miles per hour. However, if you remove the coal air intake, which I did, uh, this thing, it's quiet. And that's what's scary because it, it's quiet, but it moves like a, let me see what's a fast animal, like a, a cheetah, a stallion. Uh, <laughs> I need to cool my hair. But... But, distracted drivers. <laughs> oh, I need to cool my hair. Um, anyway, so. so uh, pros for me of having the cold air intake is that it, it sounds good. It gives a whistle when you rev the car lightly. You could hear it's It's not like a big turbo charge, but you could hear the whisk, the hiss. I like the hissing sound. Um, when you turn off the car, it, it goes, <clears throat> you can hear a little like, ooh, it's just nice. I like it. Um, it does make the engine feel bogged down at lower RPMs when you're pushing hard. Now, if you just go on the gas pedal like you're regularly driving, it's fine. But like, if you're like, you know, you're beating the car's engine, you're, you're kind of like, uh, okay, uh, what happened here uh, so I'm gonna put it back in but I'm going to see 
if I can figure out something. That's the point of this video. I was trying to figure out what I was trying to talk about. With this coal air intake, I realized that my oils, engine oil. So, okay, because I changed my engine oil, but I didn't clean this out. So the last round was 3,000 miles. And then I changed the engine oil. Uh, and it wasn't thick and gummy and hard. Ooh, it's in my face. It was still flowing nice and watery. I put my hand in it, my bare hands, and I didn't feel any oil, any uh, metal material from the engine. It, it seemed fine, but it just was super dark. Like, like, that's, I put, when I put the oil in, it was gold. And now it's, it was dark. So, in cleaning the coal air intake at this time, I'm going to put, I'm going to try to allow it to go 3,000 miles without putting this on, do an oil change, and see if I could figure out, um, is this causing my oil to be darker than normal? And if it is, what's the content? Like, what's the deal? Like, is it damaging my engine? Um... Cause I'll be honest. Also, I I drive like a I drive like a, a Mustang. I drive like a Mustang. But I like it. I have not had any problems, troubles <clears throat> since I had it installed in my car. Um, I didn't have any check engine lights to do with it. Though I will say one thing. Um, and I want to try to be honest with you guys as much as possible. The, so I had this in the car, I don't know, like a long time, long, long time. And I think it was clogged up and I have a feeling it wasn't sucking in the, uh, you could see it. It wasn't sucking in the amount of air that it used to suck in. And so I was putting in 87 octane fuel in the car. Once in a while, I would go 93, I mean 91, and then I would put uh, E85 in it, and I will see, will, I will in the future. I, I used to see a big um, horsepower and torque boost, um, or boost, boost is turbo, I don't have turbo. What the heck? Increase? I used to see a large increase, yeah. So, I have a feeling that because I didn't clean this, it was, my engine was trying to get as much air in, but it was getting in very little, and it was putting more gas in the engine, because um, I noticed, I was still getting good gas mileage, but I noticed um, it was like an egg smell coming from underneath the car, and I checked the cats, and they were kind of on tune, on par, the... Um, the top, wait, let me see if I get this right. The top of the catalytic converter is supposed to be, I don't remember, but the temperature, the top, and before the cats, and before the cats, it's supposed to be two, uh, two different temperatures, but they're supposed to be close together, but I was, they was massively different, and so I think, with it, when you don't clean this as much, I think uh, your engine is trying to get air, but because of your demand on the feet, on, on the gas, it's giving it gas and it's not getting air. And I think I was burning fuel in the catalytic converter that was given that scent. So my mechanic friend <coughs> suggested that, <coughs> suggested that I um, upgrade my gas from 87 to 89. I did that and I didn't clean this at the time and I still had it was good. I didn't smell the smell anymore. But I'm gonna be honest. 89 octane is pricey. We're talking 267, and some places 264 versus 301, 309. That's a drastic difference. I mean, the other day I took fifty dollars to put in this car, and the she took all of it. I'm sitting here like, what? So what it used to take me 30 something, it's now taking me 50. So it's a big difference, I need to figure it out. So what I'll do, 
when I, oops, sorry, when I put this back in, I'll try to go back to 87 and drive the same way I used to drive and see if when you clean it, you don't get that smell. So I'll run that for about a month. If that's the case, then I'll upload another video sh sharing with you guys that if you have a cold air intake or if you plan on getting one, keep it clean. Don't wait for the 100,000 mile mark. Um, I think the 100,000 mile mark is for when you need to replace it. But keep it clean. I have a feeling you should keep it clean anyway. I gotta run, uh, time for me to go. So in a nutshell, I still like my cold air intake. I'm gonna keep it, but we're gonna run the stock box for 3,000 miles, which will probably be maybe a month, two, two months for me, and then I'll have to change the oil again. So you guys have a wonderful day. Thanks for clicking on this video. 10 minutes, that's ridiculous. All right, see y'all later.